on our social media. So if you're not comfortable being identified on a, um, on a screenshot, you'll be very, very small, but we're happy um, to make a plan for that. So just email us if you'd rather not be identified. The other thing is I've just turned the video on. So we're recording this event and um, we'll provide a video version of the event um, on our website soon, but you'll mainly be able to just see the speakers in that video. So that brings me to the other point, which is if you're not familiar with Zoom, up in the right hand corner, you can see either speaker view or that gallery view. We would suggest that you leave um, the view on speaker view for the rest of this call. It's been nice to see each other, but then you'll be able to get a really good clear view of the people who we're speaking with today. So that's just a little hot tip. So just to introduce um, our guests, um, we have with us brother Sefo, who's joining us actually from Samoa, but he'll introduce himself. He's just given a wave. He'll introduce himself as we speak with him today. And he's a Maris brother who has spent a lot of time at St. Louis. We've also got the St. Louis principal and deputy principal, Mrs. Salafina and Mr. Tangaroa. If you can wave for us, you'll hear from them shortly. And um, very excitingly, we've got three of our students from St. Louis who you might recognise from the video. Tarante, if you can wave for us. Sina and Malena. And you'll be hearing from them shortly. For those who aren't aware, Kiribati is one of our islands um, quite close by here um, in the Pacific. It's a chain of 33 islands, 20 of which are inhabited. It's got a population of about 120,000 people. And we know that um, particularly important to the people of Kiribati is the issue of ch climate change. And we're gonna hear a little bit more from the girls today about why that's so important and so relevant for them in their school. So um, without further ado, we might get started. And I'm going to ask a question of Brother Sefo just to get started today. And that is, Brother Sefo, if you can just tell us a little bit, how long have the Maris brothers been involved at St. Louis and what's a bit of the history of the Maris connection there? Thank you, Pick. Um, the Maris Brothers has been involved in St. Louis High School since 1984. Uh, it was an invitation from the, uh, the Bishop of uh, Kiripas for the Maris Brothers to come to Kiripas and uh, administer the school. At the time, it was known as a post-training school. And then the brothers accepted the invitation of the Bishop and ever since then, uh, they've been involved in St. Louis High School. Lovely, Brother Sefo. And can you tell us what are some of the, the issues or the challenges facing the education system in Kiribati? Thank you, Peg. I think um, some of the issues that the Kiribati education system are facing at the moment uh, in Kiribati is the fact that not enough secondary school places uh, that provides uh, secondary education for Kiribati people. For instance, at the moment, as far as I know, there are three government secondary schools and most uh, most of the sc other schools are mission schools. So, although that the government took over all the, uh, the primary educations, but it still remain the, the, the challenge of uh, not enough secondary school to cater for um, the increase in the, um, the population of young people. Sure, thank you. Thank you for that overview. Um, and we know that that does create a lot of challenges for, for everyone to have the same access to, to quality education in Kiribati. Um, I might come to you, Principal Salafina. Can you tell us a little bit about the size of the school and just give us an introduction to St. Louis? 
um, thank you, Rebecca. Um, here at the, the school, we have uh, 845 uh, students, and the number of staff, we have uh, 65 staff. Um, for two, Forty, forty, forty-five uh, teachers and uh, tw twenty uh, non-teaching staff. So it's a very big school community. Yes, it's a big school here, and uh, a big school with a lot of uh, challenges every day. Can you tell us, before we go to the challenges, can you tell us what do you love most about the community at St. Louis? What I like about St. Louis is the spirit. The, the way that teachers and students, they work every day. Uh, another thing also I like about is the teamwork, the courage and the willingness of uh, the teachers to work together and work toward the uh, uh, you know, and, uh, a goal, and uh, this one by uh, following the, um, what you call it, uh, the vision and the mission here at uh, St. Louis by shaping the students in, of, in order for them to be able to uh, achieve their, their own goals also in the future. Thank you, Principal. Um, Deputy Principal Tangaroa, we'll come back to you in a minute, but first I want to ask a question of our students. Um, um, Tarante, can you tell me um, a little bit about um, one thing that you really like about St. Louis High School? Um, the teachers and the students are very supportive. If you have sort of um, situations or issues, they are there to help you sort of gave us confidence to do what we are doing today. Great, and Sina and Melina, you can also give us your thoughts. What do you love? What's one thing you, you love about your school community? Generally, just the fact that St. Louis is like one big family. The teachers work hard. They are basically second parents for us. They teach us things that we don't know. They listen to our problems when we don't, when we can't learn. That's pretty Everything special. is so, yeah. Everything is so nice. <laughs> That's, That's a great response. And you're not just saying that because your principal is there, hey? <laughs> <laughs> And um, Malena, can you tell us what's one thing that you love about St. Louis? Um, one thing that I love about St. Louis is the family spirit and the way we work together with our teachers and friends. When, when are we, we need something, they're always there to help us and provide for us. That's great. Now, there are some other really positive things. We know also that at any school, there's some challenges. And we were talking earlier, um, Sina, about particularly we saw in the video, um, actually in the video, there was a storm passing as you were talking. And can you tell us a little bit more about that? What are some of the challenges from the environment that, that are faced at the school? Well, basically, that was from last year. We were in classrooms that were very Oh, those were wicky and um, dusty and basically the walls were not collapsing. Luckily, we didn't jump on any boulders because this year, one of, one of those students jumped and basically collapsed. Gosh. And the fact is, when the rain falls, it's, well, it can fall sideways and you have to, you'd have to move from one side of the classroom to the other. But there are also other problems about that. Roofs are leaking because of the you know, rusty copper. It's just really inconclusive to your education. That's, I've got a... Um, yeah, that's it. Great. I'm going to just share. I've got some photos here um, of what you're talking about. And, Sina, if you wanted to give a little bit of a description. Um, 
sorry, of the photos that we see. Let me just try that again. We've got some photos from St. Louis. And excuse me for the format, I'll try and make it as big as possible. But we can see here after some rain. Yeah. And the toilets, which I'm sure would flood in heavy rains as well, but they were needing some, some work. Tell us which space are we seeing here, girls? Is this like the school hall? Yeah, basically. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's, who's talking there? Which teacher? Uh, Sister Lucia, my favorite. <laughs> Your favorite. Oh, it's on the record now. The others are all going to feel very left out. <laughs> we can see, obviously, prayer time and we get a sense now for the classrooms that you're talking about. The toilet block, which we've actually, AMS has been able to already. You can see here, this has just opened, hasn't it? Principal Selafina, maybe you'll tell us about the grand opening of the new toilet block. This was the first part of our fundraising for the school's campaign. So it's lovely that we can see already something's happened. Um, yes, uh, Rebecca, I, I think firstly I'd like to, uh, to thank those people who have donated for the, you know, for the building of this, uh, of this uh, toilet block. And I know everyone was happy on that day to see this and especially uh, and, uh, the junior students, they were so happy to, uh, to use their, their, their new toilet. And I think that is uh, it's a big event and it's, uh, one of the highlights of, uh, of this year is the, 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 what do you call it, the, the, this new uh, toilet block. Thank you. I've just flicked between the before and after shot and you can see um, there's quite a big difference. And we know that toilet blocks are so important, um, not just for dignity for, our, for your, the students, but also for health and hygiene purposes as well. So we're really happy that that part of the campaign has already, has already taken place. Um, I'll come back to the students now again. What are some of the other challenges that the school faces um, at St. Louis and your community? Basically, we could say lack of resources. That's it. I'm going to resolve that. There are, well, we don't have all the textbooks that we need. And there are times when we even have to search up in the internet. Our teachers even have to search up in the internet for those sorts of things. And basically, my teacher just shared his problem. He has one textbook, and everyone shares it inside of their math department. Wow, so everybody's sharing one book. I think we take for granted in Australia how lucky we are to have access to, to books and textbooks and, and really well stocked libraries. So thanks for sharing that. Girls, did you, Tarante and Melen, uh, Melena, did you have anything to add? Any other challenges that you guys face at school? Um, is the problem with our seawall because um, our school is very close to the sea. When, when it comes to eye tides, um, the, the seal comes over to our classrooms. Yeah. Right, and that's, um, we know that's only going to get more difficult, isn't it? Due to climate mm -hmm. change and the weather is becoming stronger as we understand it in Kiribati. Um, I'll switch now back to Deputy Principal. I had a question for him, uh, Mr Tangaroa. What facilities would you like to see upgraded? Already we know we're happy that we've been able to renovate the toilets thanks to the Maris communities in Australia, but what's next on the list? What else do you need to do at St. Louis? Okay, thank you very much and uh, good afternoon. Uh, there are a lot of things, but I think uh, we put some things in our priority. First one is the, at the, at the moment is the classrooms. Uh, we are working on it, trying to maintain them. And the second one is the library and the computer room for students. And the third one is the computer lab. 
we see that there is a need for the for the student to, especially at the science uh, department, be able to to do more of the science uh, experiment in the science lab. That is uh, most uh, most of the things that we need to do uh, this year. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tangaroa. And, and a question for either the principals or maybe Brother Sifo. What are some of the challenges that face um, the whole education system there in Kiribati? It might be St. Louis specifically or, or the system as a whole. We heard a little bit about the resources and the facilities. Is that the main challenges at the moment? Maybe I can uh, I can speak from my, my side, and I think Rebecca can also uh, add to what uh, I'm looking at this time, especially with the education. I know that uh, you know that a number of uh, people, uh, uh, you know, we have a number of young people here, and our school, uh, the Marist School, is a mission school, and there are quite a uh, of mission schools here. And we also have the schools in the government. And most of the time, whatever resources come, and that uh, the students uh, in the government, government schools, they are, they are more, the most fortunate. So we, the mission schools, if, we if you want to have some of the resources, we have to buy, you know, to purchase those uh, resources. Mm -hmm. And I think that is challenge that, uh, uh, the challenges that we are facing right now. That's a little bit different to our experience in Australia, where often the, the Catholic schools are seen as being more privileged schools and, you know, people need to pay school fees to attend those. Often they have very good resources um, uh, or more resources in the government school. So it's very interesting to hear some of the differences between our systems. Brother Sefo, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? I'm always thinking of, uh, like I mentioned before, the, the, the fact that the government only provides about two or three secondary schools and also yes. uh, mission schools. And part of the, the challenge that uh, Kiripas is facing regarding that is that uh, when they had the selection of students in Kiripas, the government would take the, the cream, all the, those who uh, did very well in public exams, and then the rest are left uh, for the mission school to take. Um, and there are not enough secondary school around to cater for that. And the, the rate of uh, dropout students it's quite high and so it becomes a bigger problem uh, not just for St. Louis but also for campus itself how to cater for that um, sure. the the lack of other avenues such as um, um, some sort of uh, providers for trades where those students who are academically unable to go further in the mainstream can take those opportunity where they can study trades and whether it's carpentry or plumbing, even though there is a government um, uh, purpose uh, at PESO. This is a um, technical school. Mm. Also the criteria is, it is quite uh, quite high. It doesn't really cater for those who are ac academically lower. In their mm, sure, for that diverse range of students. So the part of the bigger problem is that uh, then the dropout students are left uh, without any other means of getting a, a good future or preparing. Yeah for uh, other skills that they can um, uh, 
make use of themselves. Yeah. Thanks, Brother Sefra. It's interesting to have those insights. I want to come back to the students again for a minute. And, and you spoke with us a little bit before our, our groups joined us about um, what you'd like to do when you finish school. So can you tell us a little bit, what are your dreams for what you want to do after school? Melena, I'm going to start with you because you started, but the others can also join this time as well. Um, I want I want to become a lawyer so that I can get more money and more money, more money and then more money and then I get more money then I can buy an iPhone. <laughs> we appreciate we appreciate your honesty. Thank you. So to be a lawyer, which is a lot of hard work, but hopefully we'll have some financial re reward for you. Um, Tarante and Sina, what would you like to do? Um, I have so much in mind. I want to be a doctor. I want to be an engineer, but I don't know, maybe God can use me. <laughs> you have lots of <laughs> options on the table. And Sina, for you? Well, to be honest, uh, my parents decided that architecture is the best portion for me. And I'm thinking the same, honestly. I like drawing. I especially like my graphic classes. It's uh, always I'm also nice. Planning I was just going to say quickly, it's always nice when your parents' wishes and your wishes are the same. It makes life a bit easier, doesn't it? <laughs> Carry on. And then, well, I suddenly came upon the fact that there are lots of problems with our engineers here because most of them don't stay and then go out to other countries to spend money. And frankly, we don't have that much creative uh, power. There are lots of there are lots of blackouts, and power is distributed. Sometimes power is distributed so that some some towns will have will have electricity while some others don't. While work is going on, and basically I want to be able to help with that. I mean, it's something for your country. That's amazing. That's yeah, and I mean, you mentioned about um, some of the more educated people being attracted to move overseas and maybe be able to make a, a, bit, a better living there and not contribute their gifts locally in Kiribati. Related to that, I suppose, all of you, the, the things that you've identified, you would need to go to university for those things. What's the situation for young people in Kiribati when you want to study more after high school? Where would you go? What, are, what's, what uh, university and tertiary options are available for you? Is there a university in Kiribati? Well, it's not ours. It's basically a joint home university, USP. <laughs> USP, is that the University of the South Pacific? Is that correct? Okay, so is there a, is there a campus in Kiribati for USP? Yeah. And does it offer all the different courses or just some specific courses? Can I answer this question? Please, yes, please, Principal. Uh, here we have uh, the University of, of the South Pacific, which is located in uh, in the islands of Fiji. So we do have a campus here, uh, uh, the, the, the campus uh, of Kiribati, but it's still in the University of the South Pacific. So students, they have the chance at the end of the year, if they do well, and then they can uh, continue on to to Fiji, and there are students also who have in-country scholarship here in Kiribati. But not only this university, they also have chances to go to Australia, New Zealand, mm -hmm. even to uh, China, you know, other countries. So they have so many chances also here. That's great. Thank you, Salafina. Um, and then we know from what we heard already that the hope is just that those people do return, isn't it? Because maybe they study abroad and, and find a life and build a life there and don't come back to Kiribati. So, 
Okay, girls, I'm going to leave you for a minute and then we're going to come back and talk a little bit about Marist identity. So I'm warming you up for that. But just for a minute, if I can flick to John, John Lamborn, if you're still there. John is the chair of our Australia Mara Solidarity Projects Committee, which is the committee that oversees all of the different and approves all the different projects that AMS supports right across the Asia Pacific region. And John, can you just share with us for a minute a little bit about your experience of taking a group from Maris College Ashgrove on immersion to St. Louis? Howdy, howdy, get us. I, I have been very lucky to take two uh, immersion groups to Kitabas. Um, and I, I will uh, start with the caveat. I also have family that live in Kitabas. So I not only have a, uh, a strong connection to the country, but I've also spent some time there. So I have been very lucky. Um, Maris College Ashgrove has taken... Uh, immersion groups to Kitabass on on four different occasions, five five occasions actually, um, and have set up a great connection with St Louis High School. Um, and unfortunately, due to COVID this year, we were unable to go. Um, and the hope is that in the future um, that we can we can reconnect and have our immersion groups travelling to Kitabass again. Great, thanks, John. Um, what has been the strongest um, takeaway that your students um, kind of gave feedback on after experiencing that immersion program in Kiribati? One of the, the biggest things is, is that to start with, people in Australia don't even know where Kiribati is. So when they put their hand up to travel to Kiribati on immersion, uh, the first thing they need to do is go and find it on the map. So, um, but once they get there, and, and I think the girls alluded to this um, when they were talking, they were talking about community and they were talking about family spirit and the connection that, uh, that our Maris boys had with the students from St. Louis, uh, I know is very strong. Um, and that uh, resonated with the words that the girls were saying, um, which was fantastic. Um, and that, I, I wanna pass on a message from our boys are obviously preparing for exams at the moment. Uh, and they were very disappointed that they couldn't be here today, um, but they do send their best wishes. Thanks, John, that's great. It's lovely to hear from some Aussies who've had the chance to visit. Girls, I'm gonna come back to you now and um, ask if you can share a little bit with us about what does it mean to be Marist and to be part of this bigger Marist family but I'm also going to put a few people on notice in our um, who are participating. Um, any of the staff um, from our different Maris schools and ministries, if you'd like to type what being Maris means to you in our group chat, and I'll read it out for, for our guests. Um, but the two school groups that we've got here, if you'd like to um, nominate somebody to share what does being Marist mean and look like at your school, if you, you can have... 30 to 40 seconds for one of you to maybe share, and I'm sure the girls in Kiribati will be really keen to hear what it, what it means for some of our Mara students here in Australia. But girls, we'll come back to you for your answers first. We'll give them a minute to think about it. So um, what does it mean to be Marist for you? Let's start with Sina. Well, for me, generally, Marist comes with a word from the very same. It and, does, it comes uh, from the word Mary, yep. Yeah. And Sister Lucia once told us a story about Mary herself. Uh, it's basically not anything from her personal life, but it's just to describe how she is. She described her as a chuck full of water, holy water, blessings from the Lord. And basically every time he throw an obstacle at her, she overflows. She shares more with the people around her. That is opposing to us out. Whenever we are, whenever something is thrown at us, we instantly feel heavy. We are instantly broken. We don't want to share. Our water is too little. And basically being a Maris is in the way of Mary. To live in the way of Mary. To share all that you have with everyone. Well, yeah, that's basically my take on it. 
Thanks, Tina. That's a really beautiful image of, of Mary as a vase that overflows with water and goodness. Um, that's really lovely. Tarante, what does it mean to you to be part of a Maris community and to be Maris? What does that mean? To be part of Maris, I think it's a blessing. Um, we were told how to love each other, how to do, to, to um, work in families and, and to basically be present in school and you were told many things about the Maris team. Those values of family spirit and presence are such an important part of our, of our family and our identity as Maris and it's lovely to always hear that Maris on, in other parts of the world access those same, those same values. Um, Malena, what does it mean to you to be part of a Marist family? Uh, it means everything. Uh, we, we usually work every day, so the love of work, we came to love these habits. We work every day and um, family spirits the teachers and the students, they all communicate with each other and the way they interact is very beautiful. And we usually pray. Great. Well, you'll need that hard work if you want to be a lawyer who makes a lot of money. So that's a very good value for you to have <laughs> as you continue your schooling. I'm going to call out now. We've got two school groups with us. Um, Emma Kent, your group there, if you'd like to unmute. And would someone like to tell us, just introduce, first of all, which school you're from and tell us what it means to be part of the Marist family for you. Here we go. Uh, yeah, so we're from St Greg's in Campbelltown in New South Wales. Um, and, I mean, it's really the same. It's, it's really inspiring to kind of see how those values that we hold as Marist here in New South Wales is really similar and the same to what they hold over there. And so it's, it's that idea that we are not just part of, of one, but as a, a larger community Global yeah, globally, not just you know, in New South Wales, not just in Australia, but amongst the world. That's fantastic. Thanks, guys. And it's really lovely to have you here. And we hope to connect with you again soon at St. Greg's. Um, and we've also got St. Teresa's um, with us, I believe. Would you like to share St. Teresa's is up on the beach in Queensland? Share with us a little bit about what it means to be Maris to you. Being Maris to us is all about your connection with people and um, it's all about like the life of Maris and Champagne. So it's all about um, our ability to share our talents, to celebrate our talents, to um, educate others and be part of that bigger thing. I couldn't have said it better myself. That's a really lovely response. Thanks, guys. And it's amazing for me sitting in Brisbane to be hearing from three different school communities and yet you're seeing the same themes come through from different countries and different um, parts of Australia as well, which is lovely. We're nearly ready to finish up now and, and um, it's important to us that we finish on time, but we, we do want to have a chance to ask questions. So if you've got any questions, please type them in the... Um, in the comments bar there. Um, I've got a question that leads on from this sense of Marist family. Um, so to, back to our three students from St. Louis, we've got a question from Nathan from Mar Marist College in Canberra, uh, that's Australia's capital city, saying how can we grow a deeper sense of, of this Marist family idea in our Asia Pacific region? What are some ways that we can try and connect better or understand that Marist family right across the region. Do you have any ideas? Okay. <laughs> it's a tricky one. <laughs> For me, it's been really lovely just today. Today, having three schools with students and so many more with teachers present being able to listen, um, ask questions, but listen to each other's experiences. Do you think this is maybe something we could do a little bit more of where we can have groups of students talk, maybe in smaller groups than this? Is that a way we can connect? What do you think? 
<laughs> that would be great. We might put the challenge out to our schools here then. We've got a couple of people reflecting what it means to be Marist to them. So from Les at Notre Dame College, he said, being Marist means contributing to a family that's concerned with the most marginalised in the community. It also means developing great connections with many other cultures, traditions and people. As a bonus, you get to meet some awesome people like Brother Doug Walsh and our Brother Doug Walsh is here today. Brother Doug, Dougie, do you want to give us a wave there? You're one of our most committed workers um, for the marginalised here in Australia and in our region. We've got a comment from Marist um, in, in Canberra. Presence is an important part of being Marist. I think that means sharing joy in the company of others. I loved the joy that you share in the videos, especially the dancing. Jenny Miller is part <laughs> of our Marist Youth Ministry team. Thank you, students, for your beautiful definitions of what a Marist is. Like the students, I believe that being a Marist means being present for others and their needs. Nathan then asks, would you guys like to see the dance moves from the Aussie kids? Yes, a... <laughs> we might leave people a bit of time to prepare, but we'll put the challenge out and maybe some of our schools can send you videos of them doing some dancing. And from Paul <laughs> down at Assumption College in Kilmore in, in regional Victoria, the reality of being Marist for me is the connection of this worldwide group of inspiring, courageous and generous people who live in the way of Mary. More and more, I'm coming to love the idea of living simply and being present. Today is a great example of the ideal of living the Marist value of presence. And that's being present with each other here today. Okay, well, that brings, I think that's a really perfect way to end the formal part of our gathering today. Um, if there's any other questions, people can feel free to pop them in the group chat. We'll, um, we'll also stay on the line with St Louis for a couple of extra minutes if anyone would like to stay on and say a quick hello. Um, but just before we sign off, do you have anything um, from the St. Louis community? Do you have anything else you'd like to share with us about St. Louis or any message for your Australian friends across here? Generally, just that we're thankful for all of these opportunities that you're granting. It's amazing and it's generally really <laughs> something that I appreciate, something that Everyone here appreciates. Well, that's basically all that. That's lovely. <laughs> On behalf of our Australian Marist community, um, it's a real privilege for us to be able to, to work with you guys and to just help some of those resources become available so you can do um, what needs to be done there at the school to make it even more comfortable and even better suited for, for your community there. So we're really happy to be a part of that. Um, and thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Brother Sefo, for connecting us initially. Thank you to the principal and deputy principal and for taking the girls out of class so that they can talk with us today. And to everybody who's joined us from all the different Maris communities, brothers, lay people, association members, and, of course, our school students and our teachers and staff, thank you for joining us today. We hope you've had an interesting time learning a little bit more about one of our Marist communities in a small corner of the Pacific and we hope to see you all again soon. Thanks a lot everybody. Mm -hmm. You can take your Thank microphones you. off and say goodbye if you'd like and uh, we'll linger here a little bit longer for those who'd like to linger and say a quick hello. Thank you very much. Thanks all, it's been great. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks Zach. Lovely Thank you St Teresa's. Thank you also to the St. Greg's group that joined us. Paul, great to see you again. Twice in one week. Thank you. And my microphone's no good. <laughs> That's okay, Paul. <laughs> Brother Doug, lovely to have you with us. I think you're our I think you're our top frequent flyer for these events. It's always lovely. Did you have anything you wanted to say yeah, to the yeah, students in Kiribati there? Uh, I just think uh, they're inspiring, very inspiring. I did put something on the chat. Oh, you did. I'll make sure we send that across. Here we go. Um, 
Brother Doug said he really appreciates you guys telling us about a mission school. It's great for people to know this because we need to know the struggle that we had in our history. We need to give you the resources that you need and, and it's great to have the students talking. You've got really quality students who inspire us and I would agree with that. Thanks, Brother Doug. I, I also, I could see Brian Stanaway there from New Zealand. Brian <laughs> anyway, former principal of St. Louis. Oh, Brian. Hi, Brian. Hey. Brian, would you like, there's not too many of us left, but if I'd known, I would have probably <laughs> passed the buck to you. Is there anything you'd like to say about your time and experience at St. Louis? He's gone, I think, is he? No, he's there. You'll need to, sorry, you'll need to just turn your volume up, that's all, Brian. You're, you're not on mute, but the volume's not very high. That's not, that's not coming through, but perhaps you can type a message in the chat and I'll read it out for everyone. Jenny Miller is also there from our Marist Youth Ministry and Ed was on the line earlier. Thank you, students from St. Louis. You're amazing and inspirational. You have the most amazing smiles and are very smart. <laughs> I loved hearing about you and your school. Blessings on you always. <laughs> and I think, I, think, um, I think it's safe to say, Brother Sefo and, and Principal and Deputy, that you've got the cream of the crop in, in Kiribati right there on our screen. I think you're... You've got some wonderful future leaders, not only for your school and country, but also for our region. So girls, we wish you the very best with your continued education. Thank okay. you. So Hope to see you in Kiribati sometime, okay? <laughs> Thanks, Bye. Doug. Bye. 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 We've still got Brian there, but I don't think we've got your, um, we couldn't hear you, sorry, Brian, but it's lovely to have you with us and we hope we'll connect and hear more from you soon. No, we still can't hear you, Brian. Still no sound. No sound. That's all right. I think we're, um, we've lost Brian now, but we're, we're back just to our AMS team and to our St. Louis team. Thank you so much. It was wonderful to have all of you with us. And I think you've shared some really lovely stories with our Marist community here in Australia.